could you talk about briefly, so what are senescent cells? What makes the cell senescent? Well, senescent cells occur um, across evolution from fish to people. So it's a very highly conserved process across what we call the vertebrates, animals with a backbone. And um, it probably evolved as a defense mechanism, largely against cancer and a way of clearing dead and damaged tissues, a way of remodeling tissues during development, especially fetal development. And the other place you find a lot of senescent cells is in the placenta because they produce factors around the time of birth that drives the baby through the birth canal. So there are good things about senescent cells and then there are bad things about senescent cells. And I'll come to that in a moment. So what is a senescent cell? Almost any cell type, perhaps any, we don't know that for certain, but almost any cell type can become senescent. And what cell or senescence is, it's a cell fate. That means it's like cell division or cell specialization or programmed cell death. It's one of the cell fates. Mm. Um, and um, things that induce cells to become senescent include damaged kinds of signals. And th that can be damaged from repeated cell division, which results in some changes in DNA. It can result from damage that cells detect that other cells are undergoing. It can result from pathogens, like even coronavirus. Mm -hmm. uh, it can result from um, uh, other kinds of factors that cells pick up that indicate that there are problems, like reactive oxygen species that we talked about before. So a cell can make a fate decision to become senescent or not. It takes a long time, at least in cell culture, for a cell to become senescent, a week to over a month. It, it's mm -hmm. much slower than other cell fates. And there are pathways that get engaged that result in huge changes in downstream gene uh, expression and proteins and um, uh, uh, metabolic factors and other things that cells produce. Normally dividing cells that become senescent undergo effectively an almost irreversible cell cycle arrest. They stop dividing. It can be reversed, but it's essentially irreversible. Non-dividing cells can still become senescent too. So they can get some of the features of senescent cells, which include resistance to dying, Mm -hmm. uh, some senescent cells, 30 to 70%, develop what we call a SASP, that senescence-associated secretory phenotype. It's a long term for uh, the fact that uh, 30 to 70% of senescent cells produce a huge range of factors that can include proteins, can inc include um, various kinds of uh, reactive metabolites, like, like various kinds of fats and prostaglandins and all kinds of things, can produce um, non-coding, RNAs and DNAs and other things that get released by the cell and all kinds of other factors. And this SASP can do, if those senescent cells that do have a SASP can do a lot of damage to cells around them, yet they themselves survive. They, uh, they have pathways that are upregulated. I'm not gonna go into the full name of the term, but we call it a SCAP network. There's a network of pathways that they have that most other cells don't have operative that defends them against the factors they're using to kill the cells around them. So they kill cells around them because of the SAS that they produce. And the, they are also, they also damage what we call extracellular matrix, like the, the, the background composition of tissues because of factors they release. Yet they themselves don't die. And that's because they've got protective mechanisms. So they're resistant to dying. They're normally only removed by the immune system but once they achieve uh, above a certain abundance, they start spreading. So senescence can spread from cell to cell, not only locally, but at a great distance. We transplanted small numbers of senescent cells into the abdominal cavity of mice, for example. They stay there, but the mice develop senescent cells in their limbs. Mm. If we transplant a heart from an old mouse to a young mouse, we find senescent cells all over the young mouse after a while, and that the senescent cells uh, activate the immune system in such a way as to cause rejection of that heart. And that's why, um, uh, you know, it's one of the, po possibly one of the reasons why organs transplanted from older into younger recipients don't do well. And that's why the transplant surgeons, if someone signed a donor card and they die in a car accident and they're 60 or 70, the surgeons will not use those kidneys. They'll use them from people under 50, but not older people. Because and it turns out it's partly because of the spread of senescence. So mm. senescence spreads at a certain rate. 
the immune system clears them. Uh, once you would get above a certain threshold of senescent cells, the rate of spread exceeds the ability of the immune system to clear them. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, the increased abundance of senescent cells starts impairing immune function and allowing further accumulation. So you can get an exponential takeoff once you're above a threshold of senescent cells. And that's when you start seeing problems occurring like frailty, like contribution to all kinds of age-related diseases and even diseases in younger people. Senescence can occur at any time from conception on. And if senescent cells accumulate, even in a child, say a child with obesity, um, that will cause inflammation of their fat tissue and make them may, you know, add to their diabetes. So senescence can occur at any point during life if there's a damaged tissue. Mm -hmm. It can occur in association with infections. Uh, and, but once, if you've got a background load of senescent cells already and you have something else that happens to you, you can, achieve, you can uh, surpass that threshold. So an older person getting pneumonia is gonna get far sicker because possibly in part because of their pre-existing senescent cell burden and the operation of other fundamental aging processes than a 20 year old who gets that same pneumonia. But one question on, on that. So, it, so this is like this tipping point when you get to more senescent cells than your immune system can handle. So is there some way that we can identify that point? Well, it, first of all, it's very hard to, uh, there, there are no really good tests for senescent cells that are completely sensitive, what we call sensitive and specific. We're getting better at it. Uh, there are some uh, blood assays even now that are being developed that are pretty good at, um, you know, when you combine them together at uh, giving you a notion of what uh, senescent cell burden is. Hmm. But um, in generally healthy people, uh, like people who are donating a kidney, say to their grandchild versus a younger person donating a kidney to a brother or sister. When you look at their cells, you know, when they're donating their kidney, if they, if they allow you to take some additional tissue near their kidney and look at senescent cells, um, you find that in the 70 year olds, there's some accumulation of senescent cells. And this can occur like in their fat tissue at the, in kidney transplant donors who are really healthy people, you know, cause they're healthy enough to donate a kidney to their grandchild. So at some point in the, between the late fifties and the eighties or nineties, depending on the individual, there is an inflection in a senescent cell burden in mm -hmm. certain tissues. Eventually you find senescent cells in most tissues, but they appear in different tissues at different rates with healthy aging. Uh, but in the context of disease states, or if someone say had chemotherapy for a cancer or radiation, because these are things that will induce senescence, uh, that senescent cell accumulation will occur much earlier in life. And one of the things we're working on with St. Jude, for example, the Children's Cancer Hospital, They've got people who got treated for cancer as children for leukemias, say when they're under age 10. So they've gotten chemotherapy and they've gotten radiation. Their, St. Jude always follows their people for the remainder of their lives who they've treated as children. One of the good things about the place. And what they've noticed is that some of these people, when they get to their forties, they look like they're 70. They're getting mm -hmm. Alzheimer's disease. They're getting uh, new cancers. They're getting diabetes. And when we work with them to look at the tissues in those people compared to age match individuals who had not had cancer treatment, uh, or, or sorry, when we, uh, when we correlated the degree of this accelerated aging state with what we saw in their tissues, we found that senescent cell abundance in these childhood cancer survivors was correlated with their degree of frailty. And that's the reason there are clinical trials beginning with senolytics in that population group. So these are younger people with senescent cells. So it depends on the context, depends mm -hmm. on the other disease states in an individual when people start accumulating uh, senescent cells and where. Right. Interesting. Yes. And so mechanical and shear stress can cause senescence too. So this is in younger people, you can see senescent cells in the knee joint in osteoarthritis. Right. Yes. Okay. So, so Going kind of going back, so we, we said that um, so cell fate. One of the cell fates is you become senescent, but there are other cell fates. I mean, it can become it can become apoptotic or apoptosis. Um, so, what makes a cell decide which one it's going to go, which path it's going to go down? Do we know that? I don't think we really know it, but we do know that there are 
40 plus different things that can induce a cell to become senescent alone or in combination. And mm -hmm. some of those things would tend to push a cell towards that fate. Uh, but it depends on the state of the cell itself, whether it's what we call pre-senescent or not. So some cells have divided repeatedly and they may not be senescent, but may, they may be on the verge of it. So when a signal comes along, that may push them into senescence, even, even a mild signal. But in uh, other cells, some of those same signals will push a cell into apoptosis. And we're, we're not sure of all of the reasons why some cells will adopt a uh, senescent cell fate as opposed to going into apoptosis on the one hand or necrosis, which is another cell fate form of death on the other. So uh, we, we don't know all of that. Right. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.